Howdy! The purpose of this video is to discuss what happens when we combine rotation symmetry operations and translation symmetry operations in two dimensions. And I'm going to give away the conclusion ahead of time. Uh, and that is when we introduce translation, uh, it is only compatible with certain proper rotation axes. That is, there are only five allowable rotation axes in plane symmetry groups, uh, and one of those is a 2 pi rotation, uh, which will leave the um, pattern untransformed at the end. Now, if you remember back to talking about point groups, um, we can have arbitrary uh, symmetry operations. So if I think about a ring of 36 atoms, there is a rotational axis that is perpendicular uh, to the plane that those atoms live in, and this ring would have a 36-fold rotation. So I could rotate uh, each of these atoms uh, 2 pi divided by 36, uh, and it will uh, overlie another atom. So any, uh, rotation, any proper rotation axis is allowable in point groups, but the same is not true when we start talking about um, plane groups. And how we're going to approach this problem is we're going to think about what happens when we have a rotation axis, and I'm going to call it A sub alpha, where alpha is the angle of rotation. Um, so if it's a two-fold rotation axis, that would be uh, 180 degrees or pi radians. Um, and I'm going to combine that with an arbitrary translation vector. And so I'm going to uh, label that as a bold T, but it's a vector um, that has some magnitude. Uh, and we're going to combine these two things and see uh, what happens. And so the first thing that we need to do is that this original proper rotation axis is translated by the translation vector to a new rotation axis. And I'm going to call this a alpha prime. So this new rotation axis has the same rotation angle as the original axis. Um, so that's the first step. And next we're going to say, well, this is a rotation axis. So we're going to rotate a alpha prime by some angle. And that angle is, of course, alpha. Alpha is a rotation axis, uh, rotation angle of this proper rotation axis. So a alpha prime is going to be mapped up to a new position and I'm going to call that B alpha. Again, it has the same uh, rotation angle as all the other uh, rotation axes. Now we can think about A alpha prime doing the same thing to the original rotation axis, A alpha. Um, that is, A alpha is going to be rotated and mapped up to a new angle here. Uh, and I'm going to call this B alpha. Um, so again, just starting from a single proper rotation axis and translation vector, I've created a new proper rotation axis, and then I've rotated A alpha prime up here, that gives us B alpha, and then I've rotated the original axis, A alpha, uh, across an angle alpha, and that gives us the rotation axis B alpha prime. Uh, and this is, um, remember, all of the lengths here are given are the same translation length. Uh, so we're going to label these all two. Now if we consider the distance between these two um, new rotation axes that have been created up here, um, for this rotation axis to be compatible with a two-dimensional uh, planar lattice, this translation vector has to have a length of m T, where m is some integer, um, 0, minus 1, 1, 2, 3, uh, and mt is an integral value of the translation length. So uh, if we think about um, the lengths involved here, let's map this line down and this line down. Uh, this distance here from the original axis to the line that I've dropped down is given by T cosine of alpha. Uh, and this length is the same length, T cosine alpha. 
Uh, and so what that means is that uh, mt equals t, that is the whole distance from here to here, minus 2t cosine of alpha. And so that's minus this distance plus distance. So mt is given by this distance in here, and that equals t minus 2t cosine alpha. Now I can easily drop uh, the t's out, and that gives me m equals 1 minus 2 cosine of alpha. Remember, I said that m has to be uh, uh, an integer. m has to be minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, because the sp separation between these two rotation axes has to be an integral number of lattice vectors. Alpha is the rotation angle. So this statement here, m equals 1 minus 2 cosine alpha, gives us a constraint on what rotation angles are allowable. And we find what those rotation angles are by simply solving for different values of m. Um, and that's what these numbers are up here. Uh, and we can look at these uh, solutions and see what they look like. So the first solution, m equals uh, minus 1. I'm going to switch colors really quick. If I have my rotation axis uh, and I have a translation, um, this solution corresponds with uh, alpha of 2 pi. And so what that means is this rotation axis rotates all the way around here, and it's going to map on top of a alpha prime. And again, if I take a alpha prime, so let's label these a alpha, a alpha prime. If I take a alpha prime and I operate on a alpha, it's going to rotate it again, two pi degrees, and it's going to map back on top of itself. Um, so this is a kind of a trivial solution because alpha equals two pi is the same as rotating element a full 2 pi radians, which is the same as not rotating at all. Um, but it is still a solution to the expression m equals 1 minus 2 cosine alpha. So that's the first solution. So that means we can have uh, one fold or uh, 2 pi rotation axes in, uh, in plane groups. So the next solution is given by m equals 3, a two-fold axis. Um, so if this is a two-fold rotation axis, and that would mean that A alpha prime is also a two-fold rotation axis. Um, this rotation axis is going to be rotated pi degrees and map back here. Uh, again, A alpha prime will rotate this rotation axis pi degrees, and it'll map over here. And you can see that that lies on top of um, what happens if I simply translate this original to uh, two-fold rotation axis. Um, so this means that a two-fold rotation uh, axis is compatible uh, with translation, with plane symmetry. The next solution is m equals 2. Uh, this is a three-fold uh, rotation axis. Again, I would translate it. So this is my original a uh, alpha, a prime alpha, and I have a three-fold rotation axis here. Um, this a alpha operates on a uh, a prime alpha and rotates it uh, 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3 and it ends up up here. Uh, a alpha prime operates on a alpha and rotates it 120 degrees. It ends up uh, up here and the distance between these guys is given by 2t. So that means that there's going to be another threefold axis uh, right in the middle. Again, um, I'm mapping rotation axes onto other existing rotation axes in the lattice. So this is totally allowable. Uh, and the last two uh, solutions are going to look similar. If I have a fourfold rotation axis um, and a translation, that would give me another fourfold rotation axis here. This one gets mapped up pi over 2 degrees, sorry, pi over 2 radians. This rotation axis gets rotated uh, pi over 2 radians. And I end up with a square lattice. So this distance t 
is the same as this distance, is the same as this distance, is the same as this distance. And similarly, if we work with a uh, six-fold rotation axis, uh, that's the solution if we let m equal zero. Uh, we're going to see that I can start off here, and I translate. I have another six-fold rotation axis up here. Sorry for the quick nature of these. Um, this one gets rotated pi over three degrees. Sorry, pi over three radians. Uh, this rotation axis also is rotated pi over three radians, uh, and they're mapping uh, on top of each other. So in this solution, B alpha uh, is identical to B alpha prime. So again, the main takeaway uh, from this is that when I'm considering rotation axes uh, that are perpendicular to translation vectors uh, in two-dimensional plane groups, and this will also apply when I'm considering rotation axes perpendicular to translation vectors in three-dimensional or space group symmetries, uh, only certain rotation axes are allowable. And the rationale is that when I operate on a rotation axis by another rotation axis, these have to map onto other existing lattice points. Otherwise, I would generate an infinite number of rotation axes and it would not be uh, a meaningful lattice at all. Thank you.